excise duty on crude oil we are engaging with the government on this within the framework of psc and rsc and are quite hopeful on the favorable outcome in iron ore our karnataka business saleable ore production was lower as heavy rainfall impacted ore handling big iron business production was lower on yoy basis in line with planned shutdown at one of the black furnaces however margin improved by 148% qq to 159 dollar per ton we have completed first step towards steel capacity expansion to 3 million ton per annum during the covered quarter by debottlenecking one of our blast furnaces this shutdown impacted quarterly hot metal production and consequently a 7% via y decrease in saleable production abita margin was majorly impacted from export duty imposition driven steel prices decline and high coking coal prices fracker achieved highest ever ore production since acquisition with 14% via y growth quarterly ferro chrome production grew by 3% to 18 kt vedanta is uniquely positioned to deliver sustainable value in fy23 our key priority will be to deliver volume on committed lines timely execution of projects and integration of our aluminium business we'll focus on production cost reduction and dynamic hedging to proactively manage commodity price volatility risk we remain committed to improve margins increase free cash flow generation and deleverage we have an outstanding foundation of world class long life and low cost assets producing vital commodities for global decarbonization transition our strategy high quality assets strong balance sheet and capability position us well for future growth with this now i would like to hand over to my colleague cfo ajay goel for financial performance thank you and a good evening everyone so as sunil said we have an outstanding foundation of high quality assets along with a strong balance sheet which positions us well for future growth i am pleased to share that despite inflationary macro environment and fiscal and monetary headwinds we commenced the year with our best ever first quarter financial performance before i walk you through the numbers i wish to talk about few key accomplishments for first quarter we achieved highest ever first quarter abida of rupees 10741 crores increasing shareholder returns paid total dividend of 11684 crores which is 31.55 shares in q1 and second interim dividend of rupees 7249 crores which is 19.5 shares in july this translates to an attractive dividend yield of 15.4 percent proactive risk management through strategic hedging in major commodities to protect margins the realized hedging gain in q1 was rupees 764 crores we are continuously working towards dynamic liabilities management and has increased our maturity profile to around 4 years and lowered the average borrowing cost to 7.6% and lastly we are progressing well on the path of committed deleveraging you may have noted the release by our holding company vedanta resources limited of 1.5 billion debt reduction in ytd july 23 that is in the first 4 months this is in line with our commitment of 4 billion deleveraging over next 3 years operationally hamsburg and fakor delivered highest quarterly production while zinc and aluminium volumes continues to be strong we also successfully acquired athena power plant having two units of 600 megawatt each which gives long term energy security and cost certainty now coming to few of the key financial highlights of the quarter our quarterly group revenue stands at 38251 crores which is up 36% year on year yoy highest ever first quarter ebitda of 
741 crores up 7% yoi with a strong ebitda margin of 32% given by operational performance despite inflationary cost pressures and moderating commodities prices pat profit after tax stands at 5592 crores higher by 6% yoi and that demonstrates a strong financial performance roc uh, return on capital employed at about 30% it is higher by almost 780 basis points from last year's 32% we also continue to maintain healthy and cash equivalents of 34342 crores which is up 7% quarter on quarter and finally our net debt at 26799 crores with a net debt to ebitda the leverage ratio at 0.6f 6x same as last years and 0.6x put in the perspective is amongst the lowest in indian peers we also have a detailed income statement uh, in the presentation and i want to just share a couple of more updates uh, depreciation charge for q1 was at 2464 crores 16% up yoi due to higher overall depletion charges at oil and gas and higher over volumes at zinc india the finance cost for q1 at 1206 crores up 2% due to increase in average borrowings which has been offset by reduced average rate of borrowings income from investment in q1 at 583 crores up 12% quarter on quarter in line with change in the mix of investment and down 20% majorly on account of mark to market you may have noted that the two recent repo rate hikes that lead to mark to market accounting but yield to maturity will not change so it is it is temporary i want to underscore that the average investment income stood at 4.7% pre tax for the quarter the normalized etr the tax rate for q1 at 23% which is lower on account of one time impact of nat the medium alternate tax asset recognition of 505 crores on full yearly basis which is a right way to look at on full yearly basis we foresee that etr will be within the guidance range of 26 to 28% which is more or less same as last year as well i now move to ebitda bridge ebitda is up 7% yoi and rupees 709 crores as evident from the bridge strong demand for all our commodities and improved prices have positively impacted our ebitda supported by strong operational performance of key businesses we also benefited by strategic hedging and higher capex and opex recoveries in our oil and gas portfolio however this has been partly offset by high higher cost of production due to input commodities inflation moving on next page on net debt net debt as you can see as on june 30th stands at 26799 crores impacted by working capital investment which is cyclical in nature and capex requirements in the short term despite softening of the prices we believe that this year as well vedanta will continue its growth journey and free cash flow generation will be sufficient to meet the capex requirements and still deleverage as we have committed as a group a quick word on balance sheet our long term focus remains in proactive credit management during q1 we have increased the average maturities to 4 years from 3.4 years in the last quarter while we have been able to further lower the average cost of borrowings to 7.6% from 7.9% in fourth quarter so quarter on quarter 30 bps lower cost of funding our credit rating is maintained at aa with a stable outlook both by india rating and crisl now finally each of our businesses are on growth journey we want to grow across the value chain focusing on vertical integration and cost efficiencies while targeting higher capacity our growth capex plan of around 3 billion over 2 years is aimed in the same direction 
and is in line with our capital allocation policy without compromising on the key priority of deleveraging at group level. Overall, with our resilient portfolio, we are well positioned to increasingly able to deliver strong performance across cycles and create value for all the stakeholders. Thank you. And I go back to operators for any Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. First question is from the line of Amit. From Edelweiss, please go ahead. Amit, we are unable to hear you. May I request to unmute your line from your side and go through the question? Uh, just to say, it's unmuted. Can you... Amit, sorry, Hello? your voice is breaking. Can you hear me now? Yes, now we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, so, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for a good set of numbers. I have a couple of questions. The first one is on the hedging position in oil and gas and aluminium division. Uh, how much of the of it was used in volume terms in Q1? And uh, what is it outstanding right now? And did we do any uh, any further hedging in Q1? That is the first question. Yeah, sure, sure, Amit, sir. So let me take it up first. So if I speak of aluminum, you know, our large portfolio, the hedging in Q1 covers 20% uh, of the volumes, and the rate of hedging is about uh, $3,500 uh, per ton. So net net one fifth volume in aluminum is hedged for the Q1. If I also speak of zinc, which again is quite critical, so almost one third, 34% volumes for the first quarter are hedged. Uh, oil and gas. Our working interest almost 16%, but effectively, if I leave aside the share of the government, again almost uh, one third of volumes are hedged. So net net 20% in aluminium and almost one third across zinc and oil and gas. As I mentioned, Amit, the, the realized gain in terms of our positions which got matured, uh, the gain is about uh, 764 crores. Let me also take a word uh, it forward. The hedging of the forward uh, quantities, which basically are for second quarter, as in the current quarter, and a little bit for third quarter, right now the unrealized gain is about the 3x of what we already realized. But that will unwind only in second quarter and in October and November, depending on the prices. Okay, great. Uh, thanks for the comprehensive answer. The second question is essentially on the coal cost. Uh, uh, what was the movement QOQ and uh, what, how much you will guide for uh, this quarter? And is it possible to separately get PSPL EBITDA? Uh, the coal cost you are asking for aluminium or which business you are asking? Yeah, coal cost for aluminium. Sorry, I should have specified this. Okay. Yes. So, the coal cost, uh, the average coal cost uh, uh, for aluminium business was rupees 1.91 per GCV, uh, and the overall power cost was 1238 dollar per ton. Uh, this is softening now, and uh, uh, the linkage coal realization, which came through Trench Five, uh, is looking very healthy now in this month. And with this, uh, uh, I think uh, a sizable portion of the usage will go back to the linkage. And uh, apart from that, the uh, auction coal prices are also softening uh, because of the international energy prices also getting softened and some of the imported coal flowing on in some parts of the country depending on the landed price uh, leverage they have. This is uh, about the coal cost. So anything, uh, uh, Rahul, you want to add on the coal cost for the current quarter and the quarter uh, one? 
No, I think you have already touched uh, human mass. Basically, you know, total whole requirement was 4.2 million and the cost was 1.9 rupees per GCD. But as Mr. Bigger said that, I think things will start moving, moving or uh, improving. Uh, because we have the, in terms of security, we have 100% always the challenge of is the metallization. And I see that in Q2, things are coming uh, better. <coughs> Last quarter we had almost 22% of the linkage, uh, and this quarter we are looking close to 36 plus kind of things. So we see the great improvement uh, going forward. There's one point I want to also, 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 uh, because of which you another point which I have forgotten to mention, I think uh, last quarter also we mentioned, uh, we, have, we have got uh, Jankani as a coal mine, wherein we have got all the coal including opening of the mine uh, to us and we'll be starting the Jamkhani mine in the um, uh, you know early next month and we see that uh, it will be also some uh, you know brief for us or rather great uh, venture for us. Okay, just as you said 22 percent linkage materialization in Q1, right? So 32. 22 was Q1 and 36 we are looking for this for us. As an overall bucket of my you know, total uh, consumption. Okay, so is it possible to quantify the benefit that we might get in Q2? I mean, a total as a, as a result of all these measures? No, I cannot no, give any guidance as such on this, uh, but uh, at least uh, the broadly what it looks like that it should fall to the level of quarter before at least. Okay, wonderful. Uh, that's helpful. Uh, thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Next question is from line of Penakin Parekh from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir. So our first question is on aluminum. Uh, given that the cost of production was over $2,600 in the first quarter, uh, and LME is roughly at around $2,400, uh, at what point of time do you think that uh, the company would uh, look to cut production? So there is no plan to cut the production. In fact, uh, uh, the last parts uh, we are powering up. Uh, the average LME for uh, the month is lying somewhere between 2450 to 2500 and uh, with the premium. And uh, as we have said that uh, uh, the cost is, is out in the current quarter not only because of the power cost, but also because of the processing cost and the alumina cost. Alumina cost because of uh, the uh, related LME going down could soften, say, about, by around $150, $200. Another $300, $400 could soften in uh, power cost and balance uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in processing cost. So, even at the current uh, LME prices, we will make a good a bit of margin and it makes a good business for us. And that is why even the remaining part from the line six, we are ramping up. So just to clarify, sir, what you are saying is that even at current LME aluminum prices, Vedanta's aluminum business would be profitable. So is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely, this is what, what I'm saying. Yeah. It will make a good a bit of margin even at the current prices. Sure. Uh, thank you, sir. So my second question is on the oil business. Now, this is some. This is a segment which has consistently disappointed in terms of production, in terms of OPEX. Uh, the government of India's latest tax uh, essentially creates another burden for this business. Uh, and even the earlier 16.67% cess uh, was never removed when the oil prices uh, uh, went lower. Uh, given the policy headwind and given the increasing OPEX, uh, is the company looking to stop investments in oil because clearly this is not a business which has uh, you know can generate good strong returns given what the policy headwind in terms of taxes are and given the increasing opex so given the original capex plan which was announced for f23 uh, if the oil says stays as as it is uh, would the company look to cut the oil capex you see the energy security for the country is one of the important things for us and we want to partner with the government. Uh, so in that direction, we have no intention to you know, think 
even an iota on the line of what you are talking. Uh, all of our projects are moving ahead with the same energy what uh, we were possess possessing earlier. Uh, infill projects, drilling in our gas assets, exploration in our RD asset, all that everywhere, AS ASP project, shale oil project, pilot project on the shale oil, ESP project. So everywhere the efforts are on and uh, we want to triple or quadruple our results from the current level and uh, ultimately we want to partner uh, with the energy security of our country. As far as the additional uh, 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 special excise duty is concerned, uh, in the background, uh, whenever we have talked to the government, government has always been supportive of looking at uh, how they can partner with us on the new projects and where it can help the country and help us to uh, make the projects viable. As far as uh, specific to the special excise duty is concerned, we believe that uh, the windfall tax for the government is already built in the PSC and uh, we have represented this to the government at the various levels. Government is quite favorably placed on this and we are quite hopeful that it could get redirected. So just to clarify, because we keep on getting this question, uh, the $30 test uh, would translate into what kind of realization impact for Vedanta? Uh, or just to make it more simpler, uh, if the tax was there in quarter one, uh, when the Brent was 114 uh, uh, and Vedanta's average realization was 110, uh, what would have been the new realization or the new EBITDA if this $30 test? Is it a straight $30 negative impact? Are there trade-offs uh, available? Well, you see, uh, you have to understand what they are talking. Uh, they are talking that uh, depending on the average uh, crude prices of the last fortnight, they will keep revising that number. So this number will remain very dynamic. Uh, all our projects are conceived and evaluated at a much lesser price. Like we evaluate our all our projects at $60. So $60, we make a healthy IRR. And uh, uh, in any case, the government thinks of uh, putting up uh, this special excise duty at $80. Uh, it does not impact our operation much uh, and impact our uh, margins beyond that. But the question is, the broader question which I am saying, and we which broadly we have been able to sell to the government is that this windfall even beyond $80 is built into the contract. If it is built into the contract, let us suppose from $80 to $120, the $40 directly does not flow back to the government. But in any case, uh, the 70% of this goes back to the government and uh, uh, that is why uh, the government is quite favorably placed to look at this and 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 look at how they can differentiate between the nomination blocks and the auction blocks. So just to clarify, uh, so far there is no official directive from the government on the nomination blocks and the auction blocks. So while you have represented to the government, uh, there is no official confirmation. So if the government does not agree, should we uh, expect a legal challenge to this, sir? Because $30 is a very meaningful number given the context of the oil uh, segment EBITDA. See, I don't want to jump the guns and uh, we are very hopeful. Let us wait and let us not think something which is not in the best interest of any of the stakeholders. Understood. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Kejriwal. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, my question is again on aluminium cost. Uh, uh, cost on both alumina as well as uh, coal. Uh, one thing is uh, uh, currently uh, how much difference is there between our cost of production of alumina and the purchase of alumina? And second is uh, in terms of coal cost, uh, uh, have 
have we purchased any electricity in quarter one or the entire increase in power cost is due to the expensive coal which we have bought? That's my so it's a combination. It's a combination of a bit of the purchase power and, uh, and the coal cost. Uh, while I will request uh, Rahul uh, to give the uh, answer on this, uh, as far as uh, alumina and our even our imported uh, alum, uh, alumina is concerned, uh, there is a differential of say around 100 to 150 dollar per ton, depending on uh, the uh, prices, LME and the prices. So, uh, Rahul, any more detail or the more color you want to add to this? No, I think uh, when we go to generally, it remains in the range of hundred dollars. But uh, in Q1 for sure, it was the delta was maybe sixty around sixty to sixty-five dollar. That was the delta between Nandigar versus imported uh, uh, alumina point of view. So, sir, uh, your uh, alumina cost of production is something like three seventy-one dollar in first quarter, and when we spoke about uh, that, on a one hundred hundred fifty dollar decrease in alumina price, so even after the decrease, you are saying that it's a difference of between sixty to seventy dollar. Sorry, come again. Seventy dollar. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's an arbitrage between you know imported versus the uh, your uh, domestic. Okay. Okay. So sixty seventy dollar is still there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Second question is sir, uh, uh, aluminium hedging only. Uh, we mentioned about twenty percent of first quarter volume was hedged, and uh, if I remember correctly, in first Fourth quarter, we said that for the full year, around 15 16 percent of the volume was hedged. So, uh, the entire difference in volumes now will it be front ended or it will be across the quarters? And if that is the case, what will be the second quarter uh, volume which is hedged at around $3,500? Right, right. So, so say, I mean, you cannot uh, calibrate the volume in line with the hedging. Right? I mean, in terms of uh, front ending the volume in second quarter and third quarter won't work. If I give you a bit of context, as you know, Vedanta historically, our policy has been that we want to realize the average LME of the month of production. But given the current environment, which is quite uh, tumultuous, very volatile, this course correction was warranted. And also in the hindsight, we see it was a good step. So if I speak of the second quarter for aluminium, uh, against our planned volume for second quarter, almost 28% uh, volumes are hedged. And uh, the hedging price is about uh, $3,630 per ton. So net net uh, more than one fourth volumes for second quarter are hedged. Same way, if I speak of zinc, almost 40% volumes, planned volumes for the second quarter are also hedged. And same number, almost 30% uh, for oil and gas. Net net, I think we are decently covered in terms of second quarter hedging point. That's great. And sir, lastly, we are going to operate our Jankani mine uh, next quarter, uh, next uh, month. So, is it possible to share some cost benefit which we can avail not next month, maybe six months down the line from this mine? Well, I'll give you some idea that uh, uh, we have three mines. Uh, the projected cost from these three mines is ranging somewhere between 45 peta, peta to 85 peta. So Jamkhani, the cost will be somewhere between 80 to 85 pesa. And uh, Radhikapur is somewhere between 50 to 55 pesa. And uh, uh, Kurloi could be around 45 to 50 pesa. So this is the range. And the weighted average uh, you can work out could be around 60 to 65 pesa. Okay. Versus 1 rupee 90 pesa, which we incurred in first quarter. Correct. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Vishal Chanda from Othila Oswal. Please go ahead. Vishal, may I request it and veto line from your side and go with the question, please? <coughs> yeah. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, sir, you are. Yeah. Uh, sir, my question was with regard to the oil and gas business again. Uh, from time and again, we have been trying to you know improve the production run rates, and we have been talking about uh, improving production run rates. But uh, it has been a disappointment even even today also. Uh, what kind of IRR do we target for oil and gas business, and uh, 
and what kind of tar- you know how does that compare to our uh, irr targets for zinc business to understand you know how do we evaluate project or do a capital allocation across various uh, businesses so to if you can take uh, the question about uh, uh, oil and gas and then i will try to add on the zinc sure okay so yeah, yeah. can you hear me sir so uh, we can be good yeah so on on the projects for oil and gas typically at a 50 dollar oil price we are targeting an rr of 20% and that's been the case so far that all the projects that we are targeted at 50 dollar oil price we are giving a 20% rr as a threshold to take up the projects if i may supplement up uh, again the shall uh, i would again go back to our uh, group policy on allocation of capital and uh, 8th of feb we committed that any capex project uh, for the group our minimum ir will be at least 18% in case of oil and gas our internal numbers you heard from uh, prachu uh, we assume a uh, 50 dollars per barrel as a pricing even with that kind of pricing our ir in oil and gas business is higher than the group average <coughs> Uh, sir so, so we are saying that you know um, the oil and gas business probably generates a higher or higher than what our zinc business generates because uh, zinc uh, still gives you the highest uh, proportion or share of the epicta and if the irr over there is lower that means the overall irr should be somewhere uh, far steeper down would that be a correct and fair assessment So you cannot uh, calculate like that because the structure of oil and gas is much different than the zinc. Zinc, any price goes up, the entire contribution of the increased LME goes to the bottom line. But in oil and gas business, the structure is such that it attracts duties, subsidies, and then profit petroleum, and not more than 30% flows back to the business. I think that that was the the uh, the important question that I was trying to drive down. As in the IRR in other businesses are fairly higher compared to this oil and gas business, where investment is continuously required, sales are declining, there is a windfall gains tax uh, from the government. Why do we still want to continue with this kind of an investment? Why not you know propel the investment further in other spaces like aluminium and zinc, where the uh, possibility of return, especially with the, our own coal mines, you know, opening up. Uh, there is a higher probability of a better return over there. So that is an internal call that we keep our portfolio very diversified. Number one, and we don't want to put all our eggs into the one basket. The other is that we want to partner uh, with a country where the energy security for the country is very important, and we want to play a very important role in that. And we are the only private player in the country who actually. Uh, contribute 25 percent of the India's domestic production, and we remain excited about it. That we want to evaluate the new resources, OLAP, discover small fields, uh, methane, uh, coal bed methane. So we will keep participating there, and uh, the government of India is also quite favorably placed to partner uh, with us uh, in that. to look at across the t- table with a more uh, mindset of the open book to see that how the new projects can be made viable and that is why you see even for putting up the asp project they have come up with uh, the policy of uh, reducing the size to half to make the project viable but apart from that for other projects and even on this project they remain open as to what needs to be done to make these projects viable because the country suffers the most because of the oil and gas import i just want to also add the two more points here say allocation of capital and the move to capex and the resulting ir is also a function of opportunities so it is not necessarily either or say between one portfolio to another if you look at our current year's guidance on capex almost 2 billion so in fact we are investing the half of that almost a billion in aluminum 
example that means balco almost 380 million in terms of uh, road production expansion 240 250 kta and also for smelter capacity to 420 kta same with example lanjigal is one more example so net net one should look at capex production in terms of forward looking outlook and finally it is a nature of uh, the business as well i mean as you would appreciate maybe the one discovery in oil and gas perhaps will pay back for 50 in the past so net net uh, it is all the businesses and in our businesses we got to invest in a market where there might be a bit of downturn in that case the portfolio becomes resilient and we can deliver across the cycles that's helpful sir thank you very much thank you thank you next question is from the line of rahul jain from systematics please go ahead <clears throat> yeah hi thanks for taking my question so one firstly on uh, we keep hearing in the press a lot about your semiconductor uh, business what plans do we actually have and is there any capital commitment that we are doing in the next 6 months to 1 year that's my first question so the as far as uh, uh, large uh, semiconductor business is concerned uh, uh, the government of india has made a policy that how they can support the sector where this is a, also a very strategic uh, sector for the country where the government is quite inclined to make this work in the country and that is why they have uh, declared the new policy Uh, and even the state government, each of the state government is quite excited about it. So currently, we are in engagement with the various state governments, uh, and uh, they are ready to make all shops available to us to make the project exciting and viable. So we are evaluating uh, the final location, and you will hear from us. as uh, uh, we will progress yeah thanks for that and sir also on uh, hindustan ring so the government would like to exit so are we going to participate in the government exit and increase our stake or what is our stance on this so government is doing its process we are appointing the banker now <laughs> and uh, uh, in any case uh, we cannot acquire more than 5% in a, in any given year or 25% uh, of the stake sale at any point of time uh depending on whether the government would request us to participate in uh, acquisition beyond uh, the legal limit we will evaluate but if they will offer we will definitely consider and any color on balco if you have in all similar lines no we we have no way forward for balco as of now neither the government uh, has uh, made any plan as far as our information goes okay thanks so much thank you thank you next question is from the line of pratesha from investor capital please go ahead Hi. Hi, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, my first question pertaining to the debt maturity profile of the parent. Uh, would you be able to provide some more color on that? Uh, to my understanding, it was around 3.7 billion dollars uh, for the fiscal, uh, which included uh, around 300 million dollars for ICL and interest costs of around 700 million dollars. Uh, if you could uh, help uh, on a quarterly roadmap over here. uh that will be quite useful now, the reason i ask this is i'm also trying to understand the payout for the full fiscal thank you so much okay. yeah sure i'll be i'll be kind of a brief on this one you know this is the vedanta limited call but you're right uh, in terms of uh, for the current fiscal for vedanta resources total maturities is 3.7 including a billion which is a combination of interest cost and icl that leaves almost uh, 2.7 billion for the full fiscal in terms of external debt out of which uh, out of 2.7 roughly 2 billion are falling due in h1 uh, vrl as we all know is looks at the number one half yearly basis so out of 2.8 uh, 2 billion in h1 and the balance of 0.8 in the second half 
you may have seen given the recent uh, two interim dividends by Vedanta Limited, the receipt and Vedanta resources is about 1.5 billion. So a billion out of the first dividend and roughly half a billion from the second interim dividend. So one and a half is a dividend. Roughly 200 million is brand fee. It makes it 1.7. And finally also we got uh, recently a couple of uh, Indian PUC bankers lending to Vedanta resources including SPI. So all of the, with all of that, roughly 2.1 and 2.2 billion is already secured. So with that, until November, early December, we are fully taken care of at Vedanta Resources. And the remainder amount, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, we feel quite comfortable in terms of uh, meeting those maturities. So either we refinance them or we repay them. This is super useful, uh, extremely useful. Uh, thank you for this. Uh, just a related question, wanted to understand uh, uh, the extent of pledges and encumbrances which are there at the Vedanta India level, uh, if it's possible. Say, for Vedanta Limited, uh, you might have seen one of our recent uh, statutory filing that uh, none of Vedanta Limited shares are pledged. Of course, while borrowing, there is one non disposal undertaking, which means the promoters cannot uh, go under minority. Now, as per CB requirements, that 51% is not pledged, but it is also reported legally as encumbered. Net-net, uh, there is no uh, pledge for Vedanta shares. If I come to the second part of it, uh, in terms of loans by Vedanta Limited, and uh, have we pledged Hindustan Zinc shares? So 5.77% of uh, Zinc stake is pledged for one loan. That number, you will remember, was roughly 14.9% with SBI. So 14.9 has come down to 5.77. This is super useful. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, one question for uh, Dugalji. Uh, sir, we had in our earlier calls indicated that we had submitted EOI for Videocon and BPCL. Uh, any specific updates over here that would be useful, sir? Thank you so much. BPCL, the government has uh redoing the process uh, and uh, uh, when the process will come we will think at that point of time and uh, as far as video con is concerned uh, this is uh, you know the legal process is going on sure sir uh, this is helpful thank you so much we should get up Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rashant Kumar from Lawless Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, good evening and thanks for the opportunity. Sir, just wanted to understand the uh, latest on the uh, royalties uh, uh, that we pay to our parents. Sir, where is that? Uh, where where are we at? And uh, FI22 was what was the amount and what is that expected for FI23, sir? Right, Rashant. Uh, I mean the agreement, as you know, uh, remains same. So in terms of uh, the coverage, in terms of entities, and the rate of royalty remains same as the last couple of years. That has not got changed. Uh, the broad number for last fiscal, FI22, the royalty was almost uh, 200 uh, million. In the current year, as you know, it is largely tied to the revenue. We think this number will be almost uh, 250 or 275 million in the current year. Sure, sir. Sir, just our two cents uh, on this. Sir, uh, generally in industries and sectors where there is a IP and patented knowledge or brand that is being uh, given to the Indian entity, for example, auto, pharma, FMCG, etc. Royalties is a very well established practice. But then, sir, in our industry uh, and you know the mining metals kind of setup, uh, this is not a very uh, 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 you know uh, widely prevalent. That is one aspect. Second, sir. If, let us assume you add back, instead of giving it as royalty, you add this back to the dividend pool. Anywhere 70% goes to the parent. The rest 30% comes to minority. But then what that immediately does is, let's say, you, let's say it's 200 million, you add that back to the dividend pool, immediately it raises your valuation by $2 billion. Out of that 70 billion, anyways is owned by the parent. So get, they get a 1.4 billion net benefit in market value, and then what they lose is 60 million, that's it. On the cash, uh, that would have otherwise come as... Uh, that would have otherwise gone directly to them. So it wouldn't it be, and that is one. Two, there also be a very good re-rating in the overall uh, multiple and the yields that the company would, would be getting because 
some investors may see this as an overhang so this is our feedback just uh, well, your thoughts are also please kindly welcome and please share your insight on this sir. thank you thanks uh, for the input uh, and uh, your view point uh, it could be you know the personal view point what uh, you are expressing but uh, uh, this has gone through the required legal process and the board approval and all the approvals have gone through and after all the stakeholders and the board members are convinced that there is a substantial value addition which is done by the parent and that is the royalty is taken so so that is what my broader view point okay sir understood sir thanks sir so my second question is uh, sir, generally vedanta has never hedged their uh, volumes forward uh, this is one exception uh, exception that we did it uh, i think in march uh, or april and it has turned out in hindsight turned out to be a fantastic op- uh, uh, move saving about a couple of thousand crores for the company uh, mrs uh, to this to the cfo sir what was your thought process when you decided that uh, back then based on the market based on the pricing etc etc if you could kindly share your thought process as to what made you to take this call you and your team together no this was done based on the uh, the evaluation which was done internally and uh, based on the expert advice and we have also set up the hedging desk uh, set up the internal uh, headed by uh, a global uh, hedging expert who has come on board so depending on that uh, and benchmarking uh and the valuation we took a call at that point of time it was a very strategic call which was taken see great you will appreciate that risk management has to be a dynamic process it must take into account the current environment which as i mentioned earlier is quite uh, tumultuous very volatile typically vedanta you are right has never hedged we are fine to capture the average lme for the month of production but given the significant yo yo in in terms of uh, the pricing going up and down that to within a very short time frame vedanta decided to make this course correction and you write again that uh, in the hindsight it was a good step but let me also add that uh, hedging is not a tool uh, to make money you know vedanta's expertise lies in metals and the mining hedging is to protect the margins but again i don't think uh, is the right way to look at the hedging in sxs imagine uh, if we had hedging losses which means on the remainder 80% uncovered portfolio the pricing would have been far far higher than where it was right but but you're right uh, we are glad that we covered our 150 volumes and to that extent we could protect the margins so sir and one small follow up from previous uh, participants sir so on the 30 dollar uh, new stress on crude how much of the hit will be on ebitda sir after taking away all the government uh, contributions etc is it be 15 18 or less or more sir at the ebitda level what is that per barrel uh, you have that calculation pocho uh, yeah uh, i mean i can i can explain that a little bit right? uh, so at ebitda level you know because at 30 dollar a barrel in our pc share government i the thadi barrel doesn't doesn't hit us directly on our ebitda because government actually pays out of the 30 barrel 30 dollars almost 70 dollars as part of the profit to premium so the net effect on ebitda post cost and everything could be around 5 to 6 dollars a barrel at that price so you have to realize this is a price thing at 120 it was 40 and when it reduced 30 so at that price it's about 5 dollars an hour Okay, sir. Understood, sir. Great, sir. Thanks, sir. And wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll take the last question from the line of Sumangal Nevedia from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the chance. Uh, my first uh, question is on the power division. Uh, the margin this time is almost at record low, 20 paisa per unit of power. Uh, is it possible to share the breakup between PSPL and uh, other gases or uh, business? And uh, if you can just explain how should we look at earnings here? Because at least my understanding for the PSPL business was that it is a take or pay kind of an agreement, and our availability has been good, 77 to 80 percent. So we were kind of modeling around 1,000 crores of EBITDA run rate on an annual basis. But time and again, this is basically. Uh, uh, Under our expectations, 
so just some explanation on that is requested now while we will give you the uh, exact calculation but uh, let me tell you that uh, you know this construct of this contract uh, the construct of this contract is that uh, the coal is passed through and we are paid uh, based on the certain availability uh the availability uh, is on an annual basis uh the quarter to quarter availability could vary depending on whether the annual shutdown is due in that quarter or not in the first quarter one of the unit uh, need the end shutdown major shutdown that we have taken but over the year uh, our belief is that uh, our uh, availability will be uh, more than the contractual availability There are there are more breakups if you are interested the, in our IR presentation. Uh, it's page number 36, which covers the entire power panel across uh, Jharsugda, Balco, PSPL, and also zinc wind power. Uh, if you want more information, uh, please do write to Mr. Sandeep Agarwal, our head of IR. Or refer this paper. Thank you. Okay, all right. Uh, and just one follow up uh, on our coal mix. I missed the initial commentary. So, if you can just, I mean, just repeat, uh, 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 what is the mix and how is the mix changing? I mean, uh, uh, our linkage supply is increasing. And are we replacing some more of imports or reauction with linkage in the coming quarter? This is just share some change. No, the last quarter was a mix of linkage, reauction, coal, uh, import, and the local purchase, spot purchase. This quarter, we believe. it will be a combination of linkage and e auction uh, as uh, my friend rahul said that uh, the linkage could vary somewhere between 35 to 40% and uh, the e auction could be somewhere between uh, uh, around 60% okay and at the peak what what can be a linkage mix at the peak uh, and uh, what what sort of inventory how many days of inventory do we carry Rahul, no. Uh, let me first answer the last question. We have, you know, five to six days inventory, which is better than the previous quarter from the inventory side. And uh, another question would be that, you know, what we are talking about, Mr. Dubey has already answered. In terms of linkages, you know, we will be almost thirty-six percent. But ideally, I have fifty-five percent as you know my contribution. But it depends on metallurgy. So there is scope from uh, one hundred moving from thirty two percent to thirty six in this, and then I will be meeting meeting to fifty five percent. And captive will also play a role. As I just said, that Jankar is getting started now. I hope I have answered both your questions. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, and all the best. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sandeep Agrawal for closing comments. Thank you, Nira. Thank you all for taking time out to join us. I hope we were able to answer most of your questions. In case you have further questions, please feel free to reach out to us. This concludes today's call. We look forward to reconnecting you for next quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Vedanta Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. We may now disconnect your lines.